Dear brothers and sisters, the saints in Christ, welcome to a new episode. Today is the second and last episode on logical questions uh, regarding the oral tradition or tradition. Okay. In the previous episode, we like uh, explained or exposed that the idea, or I would say the uh, the myth of the oral tradition, actually it is a Jewish idea. Also, we uh, explained that, that it is very, I would say it's impossible that the tradition, uh, oral, tradition oral tradition could be uh, trusted at all, especially we don't have the original text because it's an oral thing. And so even we don't even know the language itself and uh, we don't even know the context and even we don't know who did the translation over so many years and what qualification this person had and to what extent the translation is really uh, reflecting or the, uh, like uh, the, the proper and the real meaning of the uh, the saying or the word in its language and its, in its context. So the credibility is, uh, I would say, zero. And uh, the idea of the father said so or we received it this way is actually is uh, just a vague or an empty slogan uh, meant just to uh, overrule the people and last uh, only like to shut them up not to continue asking or investigating all right also we've seen a disaster even uh, to uh, forge the translation of the uh, uh, the verse in uh, the book of Acts chapter 20 verse 7 breaking the bread which actually <clears throat> In the Greek text, in the Greek manuscripts we've got, is translated, breaking the bread, how it was translated into Coptic, and then instead of saying breaking the bread, it said distributing the body of the Lord, which is which is a shame thing. And while actually it is a shameful thing, like to forge a translation like that, they consider it as a, something to boast as if the Coptic is the original language, as if the Coptic is the, like, uh, uh, I would say, the inspired word of God. No, it was the Greek one, not the Coptic one. So, if actually the people in the charge in the church, I would say the religious people, they had these guts and forged the text that is written, how come that can you trust them in whatever it is oral? You understand if they if they change it, the text, the real thing that we you can easily say no, this manuscript doesn't say that. How can you trust them? We say ah, oh, the fathers said that. No, you cannot trust them. Okay. Also, last time we took one example from the Bible that we from the uh, introduction of the uh, uh, like the first chapter of the book of Luke that at that time, which was like only about thirty years after the ascension of Lord Jesus, there were many people writing about the life of Jesus, right? And but in fact, and uh, there were many people, but in fact, yes, so, so many of them were like not like uh, I would say accurate writings. And eventually, the Holy Spirit just uh, approved only four uh, Gospels. Okay, today we'll continue from in, uh, uh, inside the book that within the first 40 years since the ascension of Lord Jesus Christ, there were plenty of false teachings, false writings, and false, even false prophets. Uh, but the reaction of the Holy Spirit was not like keeping those people away, but actually the reaction that the uh, Holy Spirit moved eight people to write to us the 27 books of the New Testament. Only three of them were from the 12 uh, uh, disciples. The eight that wrote the uh, New Testament are four different ones for the four Gospels, St. Paul for the Epistles, this is five then, St. Peter, three epistles, St. James, one epistle, and St. Jude, one epistle. So, there are the eight. 
three out of those ones were disciples of Jesus Christ. Matthew, John, and, uh, and Peter. Okay? Now, let's come now to another uh, example to prove that at the very early stage of the church, uh, could be within even 25 years since the ascension of Lord Jesus Christ, there were false prophets, false teachers, and even some people would say, Paul said, while well, actually did not say, all right, that verbally. Okay, so let's read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit, this shows what false prophet, or by word, his false teachers, listen to the coming one, or by letter, as if from us. This means what some of the people went to the Thessalonians people and said, Paul said this, and the Paul said, no, I did not say this. So he said, I repeat this again, don't be shaken either by spirit, like if a false prophet comes to you to tell you something different than what I told you, or by word, like if there is any teacher that telling you something which I did not say, or by letter, by letter, as if from us or some, some yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Paul said this, uh, this letter from him. No, it is not, was not from him. So this is sure what the Holy Spirit did not stop those guys. And even, sorry, St. Paul was still alive. And some people say, oh, yeah, yeah, I got a letter from, from Paul. But it was not actually from Paul. All right. So what is the situation of the Holy Spirit? He did not stop those people, but he moved some people to teach us the proper uh, uh, word of God. Next one. Uh We'll take now another example from uh, an oral discussion between Lord Jesus Christ and Peter and how it was through all our oral like uh, talks or movement or like the word moved from one, one mouth to the other. It was a change it severely and thank God the Holy Spirit moved St. John like 50 years after the, this discussion or this talk to fix the problem. Uh, you remember in the book of John chapter 21, after the resurrection, the Lord Jesus Christ met seven of the disciples catching fish at the uh, Sea of Galilee. You remember this story? And after uh, they didn't eat, they didn't catch fish, the Lord said, uh, like, uh, lay the net uh, to the side of, uh, of, the, of the boat. They, boat, they caught 153 uh, fish and then they came out just uh, had like food to them it was ready after the eight lord jesus christ took peter alone and he went for a, a walk and he asked him three times hmm? uh, you love me more than those ones now let's read this together while they were going like that then what the, the bible says the following then peter turned around so the disciple whom jesus loved the following so he saw whom john peter Seeing him said to Jesus, but Lord, what about this man? Like you asked me like to look after the sheep and all that stuff. What about this guy? So like you would like to see what, what his role will be like in, in mission work or something like that. Jesus said to him, like to Peter, if I will, if I will, that he remain till I come. What is that to you? You follow me? So the Lord like said, talk to Peter. Don't worry about him, just you follow me. If I, if I will, I can keep him until I come back. Now listen to this. Then this saying, what saying? We'll read it now. This saying went out among the brethren. What saying? That this disciple, that is John, would not die. Yet, yet Jesus did not say to him that he wouldn't die. But if I will, that he remain till I come, what is it to you? And so what have actually, then this saying went out. Went out in Greek is exiri, exirkomai. Exirkomai. Exirkomai means like spread, like at a, a very like uh, wide scale. And even it says among the brethren, you know, like among the believers. 
So what happened? What happened actually between Logias and Peter, when it was moved from one person to the other, the statement was changed and people began to say, ah, John will not die until Jesus comes back. See what happened? So, now I would like you to imagine if, if, John wrote his his gospel nearly 85 AD, all right? Could be 80, 85. So this means what? Half a century after this event, half a century after this event. And it was spread even among the believers that, they, that John will not die. Can you imagine 2,000 years later, what would we hear if it was going through this oral thing? Definitely, we will receive it as what? Well. John will not die, but actually John died. Yes, you know the story of St. Mary in, uh, that I mentioned in uh, uh, episode number 50? The Catholic says, the Catholic say what? St. Mary did not die, but just ascended to heaven alive. What Orthodox say? After Orthodox said, no, she died. Lord Jesus came with some angels and even received her spirit, not body, and they took the spirit up to heaven. And she was uh, buried. And this is what the, the Orthodox says. And three days later, Jesus in heaven changed his mind and he asked his angels to go and to bring the body from the grave. And if you remember, Amber of Ail, uh, in one of his episodes, when someone asked him, where is the body of St. Mary? He said, St. Mary lifted up from the grave and she was died and now is buried in paradise. I hope that you have seen this one. I had a post about this one. I called it, but it was in Arabic. I called it the undertaker of the paradise. All right. Like we said, he said, I, uh, he, like the body was taken and now she is buried in the paradise. And that was an answer for, uh, in, in, a, in a program when someone said, uh, isn't St. Mary at the sitting at the right hand of her uh, son in, in heaven, which is not true at all because even St. John, when he went, he didn't say anything. But he said, no, she's in, in <laughs> she's buried in paradise. So of course, there's confusion. However, I wanted just to tell you, if this was not written to us by the Holy Spirit, we would, we would be in this mess. Did he die or not? Someone say, no, he did not die. Someone will say, he died. Okay. However, however, what was the uh, uh, situation of the Holy Spirit for this particular uh, situation. Sorry, I mentioned it is the uh, about St. Mary, it is in the episode number 50, no, it is number 25, all right? Number 25, yes, I get, yes, number 25. Uh, I'm not too sure, 25 or 50, will be one of those ones. Anyway, it, it, it is titled uh, The True Story of the uh, Ascension of the Word of St. Mary. Anyway, what was, anyway, what was the uh, role of the Holy Spirit? Uh, regarding this situation. Number one, he did not stop the statement from a changing and it became like a rumor and even the believers believed in it. But number two, the most important thing, the Holy Spirit led St. John after 50 years nearly to reassure and write to us the truth and he left it to us in writing hard copy in manuscript so we do have the assurance what is it about and did not leave us like in confusion someone says oh yeah, yeah he died no no no, no. He, he, uh, he did not die he died and he went up no he did not he went up straight away like what happened with saint mary between the catholic and the orthodox did you see so now we can see that the holy spirit is very keen to leave us something in writing so we have a reference book, we have a reference stuff, and we have thousands of manuscripts to go this way. All right, now let's take another example from the Bible also. So that was the one that I mentioned now was what? Was like about something mentioned orally, it changed, then was fixed through text. Now we'll take now something was written and misunderstood and spread, 
And what happened? The Holy Spirit, yes, led St. Paul to fix it. All right? So we have the, the, the proper, what actually he meant. Now, let's read this in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 5. It says, I wrote to you in my epistle not to keep company with sexual, sexually immoral people. All right? What about this? Some people said it is in the same epistle, but actually it refers to another epistle. Mostly is lost. It's, it doesn't matter. Lost. To our, we, we have enough that is good enough for us. Okay. What happened? He told them, the people in uh, Thessalonians. Uh, sorry, uh, Corinthians. Corinth. He said to them, do not have a, a company with uh, sexually immoral people. The people in Corinth understood it that, like to have no company with all the sexually immoral people at all. So, so they were not dealing with any of those ones which were plenty in the community, uh, outside the church even. So, St. Paul now is telling them, no, no, I did not, I did not mean that. So, he, yet certainly did not mean with the sexually immoral people of the world or with the COVID or extro, extro, extortions, 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 extortions or idolaters, since then you would need to go out of the world. He said, if, if actually you, you, you keep no relationship with all the sinners, so you have to go out of the world. But, what a bet, but now I have written to you. Now, I, I, I'm fixing you the misunderstanding. I, not to keep company with anyone named a brother, which, what does it mean named a brother? Like, he is a believer in the church who is sexually immoral or covetous or of an idolater or a reviler or drunken or an extortioner, not even to eat with such a person. For what have I to do with the judging those who also are outside, like the non-believers? Do you not judge those who are inside? Like you are as believers, you have to judge each other. Like, but of course, with someone leading this to make sure, yeah. But those who are outside judges, God judges, judges. Therefore, put away from yourselves the evil person. So he said, when I meant not to have company with those like uh, uh, sinners, he said, I meant if someone inside you is like uh, idolater or have sexual immoralities, he said, no, we have to like isolate this person until he repents. All right, but he said I did not mean the whole thing. What I would like to come out of this is, even something was in writing, but people misunderstood it. Now I come again and I ask, if whatever in writing, they could be misunderstood. Now, how about what they, when they say about the oral thing? You cannot control this one. All right. Uh, now. Uh, I would like to come to uh, comment on the uh, sentence when they, they say, the fathers said that, we received it this way, okay? I'll put some questions here, please. Or some comments, sorry. One, the, 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 the statement itself is very vague, and I would say also it is misleading, because have all the fathers agree? Absolutely not. Number two, even if some fathers like interpreted the same chapter or the, or the same book, has their interpretation was the same? Absolutely not. You know, for example, some fathers, they think that the sin that Adam and Eve committed not eating from the, and was like explained in the sense of, in the expression of eating from the tree, he said, they said, actually, Rana, they did not eat from a tree. It is a symbolic thing that actually referring to they slept together sexually. First one said that, as far as I can go back, is uh, uh, Origanus, origin. All right? So some fathers actually adopted this. They say, hey, whatever mentioned as eating from the forbidden tree was 
uh, not to have sexual relationship with uh, with Eve, and in fact they fell into this. Some people, some fathers said that. Some others, no, 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 they did not say that. Say say something different. All right. And I would ask now, which father will you follow? The one said this one or the other ones. Okay. Uh, I tell you one more thing. Some fathers in explaining Genesis chapter six about uh, the sons of God saw the uh, girls of men and they uh, they had sex with them and they got the uh, giants. Some fathers said actually the, the, those the sons of God are the angels and they say those angels got uh, relationship with the uh, uh, women, the human women, and they breeded what? The giants, uh, which is like their height, I cannot say at all, between uh, 1,300 to 1,500 meters, by the way, and uh, they breeded the demons. Some fathers, by the way, said that. Some others said, no, it is not like that. All right? So we, when you say, the fathers said that, this means what? All of them? No, of course not. So which fathers you follow? And do you consider some of them as heretics or not? Next one. Has the fa all the fathers explained or commented on all the book and on the whole Bible? Of course not. Some of them, even up to the fifth century, even some of them, they did not quote some of, of, of some books of the Bible. Number four, where actually they live in love and harmony together? Absolutely not. In fact, they called each other heretics. They were actually dobbing each other to the governor or the, the ruler to be excommunicated and to even be exiled and they die in their, in their exile. And as I mentioned before, at least if, if you remember the story of Amba or Baba Theophilus, uh, who are called, who is called the Egyptian Pharaoh by the Greek Orthodox, and how actually he was totally unjust and, uh, and oppressed St. John Chrysostom, and actually he lobbied until the guy that St. John actually was excommunicated, exiled, and he died in, in the exile. So actually the father were, were, were not living in harmony or uh, in peaceful life together. Okay? Uh, now let's come to a third and last one, the Apocrypha books. Apocrypha books, and what is the situation of the Holy Spirit of this? Listen to this. Number one. We'll talk in detail later about the Apocrypha books, but now I'll, I'll take it as something. Now it is written books, and what, what, what is the situation of the Holy Spirit about this? Number one. Evangelical churches believe in 39 old uh, Testament books and the 27 for the New Testament total of 66 books. Coptic Orthodox, they add six Apocrypha books to the Old Testament, then they will come to be, to be 46 plus 27. And many times, Father David Lama says, the Father delivered to us 46 Old Testament books, which is wrong, by the way. Okay, but we'll leave it for the moment. And the total now comes to 73. Now, next, listen to this one. The Ethiopian Orthodox Church, which is a sister church to Coptic Orthodox Church, they believe in 15, not only six, in 15 Apocrypha books. Six of them is the Coptic Orthodox Church plus extra nine. And they come to the total of 44 of Old Testament, 27 for the New Testament, total of 81 and inspired books for the Ethiopian Church. And by the way, I contacted them personally to assure that because someone said, no, 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 the other nine are not really inspired. They don't believe in this. Uh, but I, I got this from a priest, a very important priest and said, no, we live in 21. All of them are inspired books and we have to follow them. By the way, one of these books is the book of Enoch, where actually it says like the angels married to the uh, uh, women of, of human. And they, 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 they begot the giants, and they say the giants are actually about 1500 meters height. So, uh, would you believe this? And what, uh, by the way, and what the Coptic Orthodox Church to do about this? Will, which one will believe about that? All right, as of what I'm mentioning now, what is the situation of the Holy Spirit of this? The Holy Spirit kept 66 or 73 or 81. So, if it is the written one we don't know, the Coptic Orthodox doesn't know exactly, are they 66 or 73, like they believe in, or 81, 
like the the the, the uh, like the Ethiopian one. So what what is the Holy Spirit in this? All right. So if we say the Holy Spirit, so what the Holy Spirit did this stop it? No, it did not stop it. But we have like uh, we know where we are. It's only thirty nine plus twenty seven. Even if you read the six ones, we'll come one day to this. They have plenty of superstition and myth stories. All right. Now, I would like now quickly to summarize both uh, episodes. Number one, oral tradition is absolute myth. It's basically a Jewish one, and it crept into the Coptic Orthodox Church and also the other churches like uh, the Catholic one. Number two, we don't know the original language of the uh, oral tradition. We don't. We cannot find it to know what is the exact word and what actually does it mean. We don't have this, of this word or this saying of the Father. Number three, we don't know how the translation actually went through all those many years and from generation to generation. Number four, we don't know the amount of the tradition, oral tradition, and how did it, and whether it came to us in full or like less or more. Number five, we don't know the context and accordingly, we cannot trust what it said to us. Number six, we don't know exactly who of the father said what. Because when they, the father said that, it gives you the impression that all the fathers, absolute crap. No, it is not. Number seven, and this is the most important one. What is the, uh, I would say, the organization that in charge of delivering the father's sayings, to the servants, like to the priests, to the deacons, to the bishops, and even to the servant that they go to the pulpit and uh, and, and, and talk. Or is it in any book? Of course, it is not in a book. If it is in a book, then it is not oral. So what about the learning this, by the way? Absolutely, there is no where they get this. Just the, when they stuck, it is, I tell you what, it is like a loophole. When they stuck, they say, the father said that, which means what? Shut up. Don't go any further. Don't keep investigating. Don't ask. Don't use your head. The father said so. So yeah, this means what? Keep silent. It's, it's, it's finished. No, don't listen to them. Don't follow this. Now you have go and investigate and find out. All right. So the, the, there is no place. And by the way, if you get to priests and tell if each one of them, tell me in like in the disc, disc get me the file in your head, the saying of the, of the father that you know. And how did you receive them? He will stuck. Ask another priest, please stuck. A third one. You will not find two that identical at all. Because there is no one source that they get this information from. Just believe me, it's just a loophole. Hole. They use it. When they stuck, this is the father said that. All right? Thank you very much for the time. I hope it was very interesting. I hope it, it benefits you. God willing, if it doesn't come, we'll meet again in another episode. May the Lord bless you all. Salam and see you.